Get your indie fix at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Get 20% off any digital downloads with the coupon code HEAD, including our latest release, IWC A New Era, featuring Al Snow and Luke Doc Gallows of TNA and WWE. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, welcome back. It's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 9. We're still rolling here. And uh, of course, I'm Sorgatron here in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, ready to have fun talk wrestling. Uh, of course, if you are new to this show, um, I'm involved uh, with indie wrestling myself first as a fan, and then of course getting into the production side of things up here in the Pittsburgh area with the uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance and the International Wrestling Cartel, amongst other things over the years. And I team up here with my other pal in indie wrestling, the uh, Texas Connection, Amon, uh, at Amon2, please, on the Twitters uh, from San Antonio, uh, who works for Inspire Pro Wrestling as the common commentator down there how you doing this week sir i am doing great i i, I think that's gonna be our new tag name so we're, we're the pittsburgh texas connection oh there you go we're gonna travel the country we're gonna work all the territories we're like an 80s tag team that's amazing <laughs> uh, of course if you want to find out more about this and other shows uh, uh drop us a line we're over at uh, wrestlingmayhemshow.com you can find the indie mayhem show as well as our other shows over on itunes on stitcher on youtube including our after shows for all those big shows you know if you happen to like mainstream wrestling uh for raw and impact of course and now kind of nxt i guess too um I'm going to touch a little bit on that kind of stuff, too. Uh, intro by Basic Sickness. Uh, check out his stuff. Download for free at basicsickness.com. Another Pittsburgh guy uh, that has been supporting us over the years, and we support him. Uh, you can drop a slime let us know what you think. I was thinking if there's anybody we should have on the show uh, or anything like that. Uh, the email address is goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Or uh, drop a slime at the voicemail, 412-206-WMS0. Or tweet us at Mayhem Show on Twitter. Uh, we're also... Uh, wrestling mayhem show on facebook on google plus and of course the great wrestling mayhem show group on facebook um and of course you can join us here live at uh live.sorgatronmedia.com but there's links over at wrestling mayhem show.com as well every tuesday night 11 p.m eastern time or you can drop in here two hours later for, at 9 p.m uh for the wrestling mayhem show and get the whole uh kind of wrestling experience we do here on tuesday nights uh so i'm excited amen we have our first in studio guest Yay! I love to see you, I guess. And we also have our first female wrestler joining us in Sarah Feeney, who wrestles here uh, lately with the RWA. I see you, well, not so much lately, but <laughs> you're there monthly with the uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance in West Newton, PA. How you doing this week? Good. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> got to be tongue twisted there. I'm good. Thank you for having me on the show. It's late. This is the late night edition that we do. Uh, with this show, unfortunately, <laughs> but um, but it seems to work out with the time change and everything. So, um, so so tell us, like, for those, what's kind of the the tagline for Serafini out there? Like, you know, what what is Serafini uh, uh, about out there? Serafini, Serafini is about the Fini Army, about um, you know, working hard and uh, working her way up the ladder in female wrestling. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and now I noticed uh, I noticed this little bit of a character shift uh, seen in RWA. Uh, the Italian diva has <laughs> has emerged a little bit. Um, can you talk about a little bit about what you were doing before and how you came to, uh, you know, this kind of persona? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, for most of the time, what you see is what you get with me, you know, but I can definitely have a mean streak in me. So um, I have been fortunate enough to face some great opponents that have brought out the best of me. So you, what you see is just Serafini as she grows. Awesome. Awesome. So um, what kind of got you into wrestling? Like, what was your first kind of like, you know, when you say like this was the moment that wrestling was the thing for me, <laughs> like that, that's kind of our big kind of thing here, because we, we talk about it a lot between us on the Mayhem show and everything. And I think that it has to be something kind of really special for somebody to want to become a wrestler, like go that full nine yards with it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I grew up watching wrestling. I mean, as most wrestlers, you hear them say, I did. I grew up watching wrestling. And, um, you know, it was just something that, you know, my older brother, he always had it on the TV. And I sat and watched it with him. And I would say that uh, that it was probably WrestleMania 10 and Razor Moon, Shawn Michaels. And 
I was hooked and I was like, that's what I want to do. That's, you know, what I want to grow up to be. <laughs> <laughs> now, there wasn't, I, I, I'm trying to remember, I don't think there was, there wasn't a lot of women's wrestling then or anything. Like, so there wasn't really anything of that example. Yeah. Like, 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 did you just look at the guys and say, I want to do that? Like, you didn't care at that time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Shawn Michaels, uh, I had idolized him growing up, but I also liked watching, you know, Ken Shamrock. Um, and like you said, just watching the guys and seeing what they do and say, well, you know, I, I could do that. I could make a difference difference in, in female wrestling. So uh, fortunately, female wrestling has come a long way since then. And, you know, women are able to go and showcase their talent. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's what got me hooked. What do you think of, uh, you know, of course, you know, we talk about on the other show with NXT and everything. We've been very impressed with, the, you know, women's wrestling there versus what you see on the main show. Uh, what do you think about the state of kind of women's wrestling, let's say on the main stage with the guys, WWE, TNAs, anything like that? Um, I think, like I said, I think it's come a long ways. Um, I think it's great that you're you're seeing what women have to offer in the world of wrestling. You know, you don't just see them as eye candy anymore. You see them going out doing things um, that make you say, wow. And, you know, seeing things that, you know, maybe guys did or maybe they didn't do, um, you know, originality. And, you know, it's it's impressive, you know, to, to those that haven't experienced, you know, that kind of female talent in, in the wrestling ring. Awesome. Awesome. So, so what, uh, so what, you know, what was the point where you said you started finding that path to becoming a wrestler? Well, um, you know, it, it was always something I wanted to do. I just didn't know how to get into it. Um, so I started training when I was 19 years old, I found a school locally, started training and just took off from there. Awesome. And now I know you've had, you, you mentioned that you've had some connections. So, you know, you've, you've got to work with some pretty big names in the business. I, I remember specifically uh, uh, one instance uh, you got to work at least in a, a referee capacity with uh, Gail Kim and Tracy, Tracy Brooks. Brooks. Yeah. How was that? Oh, it was quite the experience. I mean, I was still really green at the time and I was nervous as all, but, you know, <laughs> being able to get out there with, with two great women wrestlers like that and um, just being able to be a part of that atmosphere, you know, and they, they coached me before, they coached me after, um, you know, Gail Kim even gave me her contact information and told me that I can keep in contact with her if I have any questions or concern, you know, mm -hmm. and that was awesome. cool. That was really cool. It, it seems like because, um, you know, again, we, we kind of discussed earlier, there, there's um, like certain it seems like there's a lot less places showcasing women's wrestling, especially at least around the area. RWA has been really good. I know they've been really supportive having you around there and, and bringing in other girls like Sassy Stuff, uh, Jesse Bell, Smothers, actually, most recently. Uh, a really good match. I, I just actually just headed this morning with uh, you and her uh, from this last uh, show a couple weeks ago. Um uh, are you finding and I know you're going out a few other places you're getting around a bit um, are you finding it easy to find spots on the shows for you as, as far as you know just women's wrestling in general um, or is that is that becoming a, a you know kind of difficult well that's a good question I mean I've definitely had some really great um, opportunities to work with great talent you know as you mentioned sassy Steph, she's really helped me a lot um, so far and you know I'm grateful for her and um, I, I call her a friend. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, sometimes it is hard. It's hard to find, um, you know, promoters that are willing to book female females or, and then other times it's surprising because then you'll get a great opportunity and, you know, you're just like, wow, you know, but yeah, sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's not. It just depends on what the promoter's looking for and what the fans, you know, are looking for at that time. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And, and in sort of that sense of like, of like working for different shows and and for certain promoters um is it a sense of do you feel more of a sense at least in your area of like promoters that maybe need a women's match so they book specifically for that or are you getting to work at, are you finding that you get to work a lot more like storyline stuff or or is it more like um sort of when they need it sort of you, uh like is it more like sort of i i don't, I don't know what the best way to put it is but like in the sense of needing a women's match as opposed to actually wanting to build like a story, I guess, in a sense. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Um, you know, at RWA, I've really had the opportunity to work storylines and to build character, which has really helped me develop as a character. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, absolutely. I, I get calls and uh, Facebook messages all the time. Like, can you work the show? It's 
you know, this weekend or next weekend. And so, you know, you kind of just get thrown in a spot and, you know, you, uh, you feel fortunate to have that opportunity. So, but not a lot of the time there's not storylines involved with it. So it's kind of hard to, you know, um, sometimes you go into new places and people don't even know who you are and, you know, mm. all you can show them is what, you know, what is involved in your match and what you have to offer in the ring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah yeah i know they've had you involved with a good bit there in rwa you know even you've gone through i think a table or two at this point right <laughs> yes <laughs> gone through a table taking a table i was a big part of the uh tag team division there for a while so flipping between tag teams and you know I don't know. That was that was that was good for me, you know, to have that experience with those guys who were really talented, and also again to help, you know, build my character. So. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, remind me again who was in those teams. Um, we had a list, so we had uh, Juice and Joey, mm -hmm. and then we had Wild West. Mm -hmm. So we had Sane and Dave Starr, and uh, uh, Jordan. What's his name? Uh, DC, that's right. DC, DC. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I never picked up on Wild West names. They, they were a great team. It was a great feud, and, and it was. Uh, you were kind of the. Um, I, I think back to the uh, the TLC and Lita running in role a little bit in that. Um, uh, as far as that goes, I, I think you might take a bigger bump than she did. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, awesome, awesome. Uh, so, so uh, you know what. You know, again, we talked a little bit about, you know, dealing with, you know, uh, kind of the state of women's wrestling and, and, and kind of find a spot like that. What, you know, tell me what, what you think is the best thing about, you know, doing the indie wrestling and, and kind of your position now. You've been doing this for how many years? Well, I was training from 2009 till 2010. So. Okay. So, so you're, you're four years in it. So yeah, about uh, actually, actually wrestling. So, um, so like, what have you seen so far that kind of says, what the hell am I doing in Randy yeah. Wrestling? Because, <laughs> I mean, I know those are out there. <laughs> um, you know, for me, I've been really fortunate um, thus far. You know, there's definitely pros and cons, I guess, in everyone's opinion. Um, the pros would be that I've, I've got to meet and talk to, on a personal level, people that, you know, I've – could only dream to talk to, you know, people like mm -hmm. Bret Hart, um, Greg the Hammer Valentine. I've had good conversations with them. And, well, I mean, Gail Kim, you know, these people, um, Kurt Angle, you know, if it weren't for me being an independent wrestler, I'm not sure I would have had some of the opportunities that I had to talk to these people, you know, that have helped give me advice and kind of coach me along the way um, and also meet, you know, friends too. Um, but as far as, you know, the cons, um, you know, the only thing that's kind of hard as a female wrestler is just, I would say, probably, you know, the location is everything. You know, it's I do a lot of wrestling in Pittsburgh and, and West Virginia and Ohio area. And it's, you know, there's a particular pool of female talent in that area. And so, you know, it's either you need to travel, which can cost a lot of money, or, you know, they need to bring in talent from out of the area, which can also cost a lot of money. And, you know, sometimes that doesn't fit into the game plan. Um, but, you know, through throughout my experience, I've been able to meet a lot of great people. And now with Steph going to Canada, you know, you never know what doors could open up for you so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, i didn't catch is she going up there working with anything in particular i, I never heard the story on that yeah she got engaged chris cruz um nice. who's also a worker and she'll be living up there so as far as i know she's moving up within the next week mm -hmm. and i know there's a lot of good promotions up there because i know uh, uh we were Cheerful. doing the thing with jimmy carderis and he works with something around toronto i, I believe okay so mm -hmm. um so yeah. probably yeah, I'm sure she'll do real, real great up there. Yeah. So and, yeah. and wrestling's a different <laughs> wrestling's actually a sport up there, kind of, right? <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, I know a couple females up there, so hopefully I'll be going up there soon. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What you got? You got a question there, Amy? Well, uh, well, I actually do have a question. Uh, so I and you can say this for I probably ask this to a lot of indie wrestlers, but also I think even for women, it's you can even have more options in a sense. Um, sort of, I guess. What What do you consider at least at this point in your career, like sort of your end goal? Like, do, do you have WWE in mind or TNA, like as being sort of your end goal, or do you do you have any even like a large indie company in particular? Like, like do you have any like sort of preset goals as to where you want to take your career in a sense? Um. You know, that's a great question, and I really appreciate you asking that because, you know, throughout 
your time in wrestling, you'll have those people that say, you know, oh, well, you'll never make it. So, you know, if that's Mm. your goal, then just give up now. And then, you know, I've seen firsthand people that eat, sleep and breathe wrestling and, and what they make happen. So I know that all things are possible with hard work and determination and absolutely mm-hmm. um, 100%. Yes, my goal is to make it to WWE without a doubt. Um, and, you know, that was that was the goal since I was four years old watching wrestling. So that's what mm-hmm. made me fall in love with the business. And that's what continues, you know, my love for the business. So yeah, that's where I want to be. Awesome. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot of a lot of uh, up and coming independent talent in like NXT and the developmental. So I, it, it's definitely a possibility, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, kind of related to that, and speaking of the developmental, and I know you mentioned on it briefly, uh, but wheels, you you know wheels, yeah. <laughs> we know from the RWA shows, uh, our sound guy over there, uh, he asks, uh, what's your thoughts? And I don't know if you've seen it yet uh, between the. Uh, uh, Emma and the other ladies on NXT, especially if you have seen the, the NXT rival match, uh, the tremendous match they had last week. Yes, that that was an amazing match. It was Paige and it was Emma. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I know I, I knew Paige's name before she went to NXT. You know, she has a family built around wrestling. Um, and yeah, that match was amazing. And it's so great um, to see matches like that happen because, you know, you're really able to see the talent that these girls offer, you know, mm-hmm. and you're able to see the fans get into it, too. And, you know, that makes you realize they want to see those kinds of matches. And I think that's mm-hmm. very important because I know there, there's a you know somebody I know that's very um, very down on women's wrestling and a lot of people are uh, unfortunately um, but uh, unfortunately it's also like looking at like we're used to Monday Night Raw had HLA and <laughs> evening gal matches and now we get to relive those on WWE Network as some of us have been um, so now you get to that kind of match and say okay that's that's women wrestling it can happen. It can happen in the WWE. Oh my God, you know, um, and, and that kind of—I think that opens up doors. Hopefully, opens up doors for everybody to see that on that kind of level. I think. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, for a long time, you know, female wrestlers were about being eye candy, but there were still those women that were talented, like Lita, as you mentioned, Victoria. You know, those women really helped pave the way to break through you know, the, the other women, including myself in the business and give them the opportunity to not just be eye candy, but to be, you know, a, a showcase of talent. And, mm-hmm. you know, so I respect that. It's, it's come a long way since Glow Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just watched, I, I, I don't know if anybody else has this on Netflix. I just watched the documentary actually, um, kind of, you know, thinking forward to this. And, and uh, yeah, and I, and I didn't realize Ivory was part of that too, who was in <laughs> WWE later. So I'm like, I know this girl. I was like, and I looked up her name. I was like, oh, it's Ivory. Okay. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it, it's definitely kind of changed. Uh, like, isn't, it, isn't it kind of funny? Because it kind of went from pure sport, like Fabus Mula, Mae Young, back in the day to comedy. And now it's kind of getting back to, yeah. you know, they can go just as much as the other guys. Um, what do you think of, and I know we, we discussed this at length on the Mayhem show um, uh, last year with National Pro Wrestling Day. was, I think, the first kind of broad exposure to this kind of thing and i don't know if you've been involved in this but um the kind of more intergender match concept that's that's been going around have you been involved in anything i mean other than i, I guess you've been in a, at least like a six-man uh yeah. situation right yeah i've never had a match one-on-one with mm-hmm. a male but you know what i trained with males mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. when when you train with males you learn how to work with males and actually surprisingly there's a lot of stuff that i haven't done in the ring that i did during training but I wasn't able to do it in the ring so far with women. So, I mean, mm. as far as me being opposed to it, no. I mean, I would wrestle. I, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't have an issue with that at all. It, it feels touchy because I know one thing One one thing we watched, if you remember, I mean, was the one where Darcy Dixon, I think, was involved. And it felt like, because they had, like, large guys in there. The <laughs> the, uh, the guy that was uh, used to be Egotisto Fantastico, I can't remember what his, his more recent name is. Uh, Robert Anthony, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And I remember one of yeah. them was, like, signed to TNA or something like that. And, and, and it feels like it needs to be kind of booked 
appropriately, you know, because yeah. it really felt like they just kind of laid the smack down on the two girls and just walked <laughs> away, uh, which really just kind of left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths as yeah. far as that. And we talked to Darcy about it, too. And I think I don't, can't remember if you've worked with her there in RWA or anything. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if you have any opinion on, on, on that kind of situation and, and how that needs to be kind of, I guess, addressed. Um. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a booker, but I would have booked a squash match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I, would, I would probably put the girl over just saying. <laughs> mm. Yeah, exactly. But you know what? You can learn a lot, you know, whether it be from other women or men. It doesn't matter really the sex. I mean, I have learned a lot from both. Um, anyone that has been in the business for a while has really helped me, you know, tell me what you do wrong, what you do good, you know, work on this, you know. So, Yeah. You, that's how you learn. Tell me on. Tell me about this mark on that phrase that you have in our. <laughs> like, what, what's, what's the deal there? Well, you know, I've had a lot of critics. I guess I could say, you know, um, there will always be those fans that would rather see you as eye candy, and I'm just not going to give that to them. So it kind of was more like a tongue in cheek thing. Like, look, this is what I have to offer, and if you don't like it, you can mark on that, and if you do like it, mark on it anyway. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's just something I kind of came up with, and it just kind of put it on the back of a T-shirt, and that's the story. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, excellent. And now, and uh, of course, you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, you're on all that kind of stuff. I've actually seen you on Instagram, too. Yes. Like I, I like it when people take on something like that that's outside the norm. Um, but you're getting a lot of response on there. You get a lot of reaction. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've had a strong following for a couple of years now. And as I get out and work in new places, you know, people get to know me and then they start following my career. And, you know, that that helps, you know, um, of course. I mean, it's a lot of work, though, the social media <laughs> thing. I mean, I do have a full time job and I try to get booked when I can. It's like an, another part time job. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it. It's it, worth it. it. It helps to have a home base, you know, especially Absolutely. if you do have somebody. Because I remember, like, you know, back in the day, like, God, I guess this is when Facebook was, or MySpace was starting. Like, like there wasn't really anywhere to follow. Like, like when, I remember when we used to go to shows in, like, 07, like, you'd run into maybe a Chris Hero or something. Like, oh, you can follow, follow the stuff online. But there wasn't a, you know, anybody local, they didn't have a chance to, for me to kind of see what else they were doing. And I think that's a lot. That's really changed now on everybody mm -hmm. of every level. You yeah, know, yeah, so. it definitely really helps because then people will be like, oh, well, I saw her YouTube video, you know, I saw her match or whatever. And mm -hmm. so it helps word get around faster. That's, that's, I think the YouTube videos are, are killing it for a lot of things because I know a lot of requests I get are, hey, can I get that match? You know, the, the send to a booker or the WWE or something, you know. Um, and I think that really does kind of make a difference. Yeah. Uh, I have a lot of videos on YouTube. Um, and a lot of my fans haven't seen a lot of my matches that, you know, I have I do have a lot of fans that aren't from in the area that have just got to know mm -hmm. me, you know, online in any way. So they haven't seen my matches on YouTube because um, some of the matches you just have to buy the DVDs for. So <laughs> don't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> good rwa's website go. good sorg's website make it happen i did say i i, I realized because i've been going through it because a lot of people haven't seen a lot of rwa because there, there's not a lot on youtube um and i and i realized like there's no female matches up there like i'm throwing like old like jason gory g raver matches up there like we can we need to update this a little bit because especially since this that to my knowledge is the only place where this women's wrestling is happening is rwa can i recommend a match oh sure RWA, yeah. Serafini, Darcy Dixon versus Sassy Steph and Riley Rage. Okay, yeah, okay, I remember that. I think it was a pretty good match. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was a good match. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and, and the crowd, and the crowd definitely, I, I think, gets into it there. RWA too, you know. Oh yeah, the RWA crowd is awesome. I mean, they <laughs> they're behind everything. I mean, they'll boo you when you should be booed, and they'll cheer you when you should be cheered. So they're great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and sometimes more so than others. Uh, that kind of rolls into <laughs> Amen. If you want to kind of roll that into our discussion, we we were talking about yeah. crowd reaction. Of course, the hijack raw just happened last night in Chicago. That was awesome, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It gave we, me chills. What we got out of that was was pretty nice, though. <laughs> I don't um, know, Stephen. And uh, 
Steph and um, Triple H handled it like champs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you got to They controlled them. You got to remember, these are people, and, and going back, watching the first episode of SmackDown, stuff like that from like uh, Attitude Era, like this was nothing compared to what they used to have to deal with. Like, you know, our, our one friend from Johnstown on the last show was saying, it's like, I don't know how many matches I watched, pay per views where they threw trash at the ring. You know, that doesn't happen anymore. That really doesn't. They've cracked down, or the, the crowd just isn't that rowdy or, or, or something like has changed as far as that goes. But I, I know, and, you know, kind of a part of that is, and, and I see this sometimes at indies, like, like you know, especially some of the RWA stuff, like the Ryan Edmonds stuff has been pretty insane. Um, just the, the crowd's becoming just rabid, you know, hmm. like that. You remember seeing it with Stone Cold. You remember seeing it with The Rock. You remember seeing it, like, all that stuff back in the day. And I feel like the Daniel Bryan thing is really bringing that back again. And maybe CM Punk and this fervor that's happened. Um and, and Eamon, I know you had some thoughts on that too. I wanted to get into about yeah, because I think uh, and and I know you brought up on the actual Wrestling Mayhem show of how it's feeling almost and it's taking a lot of plays, I guess, from the indie playbook, I guess you could say, um, based off of what's been happening. But I think because I think one of the basic appeals to indie wrestling, as opposed to some of the mainstream stuff, is obviously the more intimate feeling and the fact that I think fans are able to get a lot closer in a sense, mm-hmm. um, both in just in physical sense, but also in like a connection sense. Um, so I, you, it's, you see a lot of rabidness and, and I, I know you've talked about RWA. It's very much a, um, uh, they're a, a vocal crowd, but in a sense of what's happening sort of in the ring and stuff like that. And I've, and I've been to wrestling shows and I've, and I've, and I've seen people that have, that have, you know, uh, you get your hecklers and you get your, you know, it, it with as with any you know I guess sort of event or, or I compare it a lot to like comedy shows where you know you have a good deal of hecklers and it's all in how you handle it. And, um, but you get that a lot of indie wrestling shows. I know. Um, I've I've seen it many of times. I've seen uh, people that have driven like farther than some of the wrestlers have that are booked on the shows uh, just to heckle uh, certain people, which is fun. Um, but yeah, it's it's a weird. I think it's a weird thing with indie wrestling. It's, um, it's, and in the way almost those indie wrestlers in a sense have to handle it. Like the fact that you are so open and, and so, you know, close to these people who, you know, are, you know, are fans in a sense, sort of how do you, how, how do you balance that in a sense? Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I had a show, uh, in Ohio, um, which uh, I had some fans kind of like trying to get involved in my match, and I was kind of thrown off by that. That was the first time I had to experience that. But, you know, you just maintain your professionalism. But I've had friends in the business tell me, you know, that they've had to be escorted out, whether it be by workers or, you know, the security, whatever, going out back doors. I mean, it can get pretty pretty violent. Mm. But, uh, you know, and I think there's another side of it, too. I mean, of course, the fans want their voices heard, but I think that a part of it is they enjoy being a part of the show and being that big of you know a part of it i mean i think Mm -hmm. edge said it best uh himself on chris jericho's podcast recently is that you know they cheer daniel bryant but that doesn't necessarily mean that they want to see him beat randy orton and be the face of wwe they like being a part of the yes chance you know so i definitely Mm -hmm. think there's two sides of it didn't we kind of see that i think a good example that is the look at the case with um uh, Zach Ryder, how everybody got behind him, the social media. I mean, he was super smart. I give him so much credit for what he did. And he's the first one to really take on social media as far as that goes. Um, but then as soon as he got the title, it was like, well, cool. He got to the That's thing. Yep. We're done. We got our fix. That's we it. We checked out. You know? He's next. And what's he doing? He's getting uh, thrown off of Ventures Trans by Kane and, uh, you know, whatever else, you know. And and, and, with- and you see that also with, like, even, like, the developmental stuff. I think guys that have come from the independents sort of get more of a backing to start with mm-hmm. as opposed to, say, you know, the guys that have come up through the – I'm, I'm trying to think. Of, like, maybe, like, like a Tyler Breeze, for example, who yeah. is, is Mike Dalton and never, like, really did a big run of the indies. Uh, he's, you know, Sammy Callahan has already got as much buzz as he has, and mm-hmm. he hasn't really even appeared on NXT. Yeah, or anybody like us, you know, uh, Sammy Zayn, or, 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 you know, Cesaro. Yeah, Cesaro mm-hmm. is like, I mean, well, I think Zayn's a good example because everybody does the Olay thing, and that is no, no part of his character I know. whatsoever. Yeah, and, and like, you gotta think anybody, anybody watching that like doesn't know in- Independence is like. 
what is this a soccer it, but chant it's or fun, but it's i don't know what this has to relate to him is it because the hat he wears i don't get this nothing yeah. they do will change that <laughs> no, no 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 absolutely not yeah. uh, and we, we kind of talked about that kind of infection of indie chanting type themes making it now to raw with uh, how like daniel bryan every time he runs for a kick and the crowd's going whoa and they're building up to it like it felt like like enough indie people came that remembered that and now all the normal peoples all the norms no, you the know norms. All, all, the, all the fans all the normal fans are now kind of like oh this is kind of fun next this guy's doing it you know this is just kind of smattering i'll do it too and the kids are doing it and now everybody's doing it and now everybody hears on monday night raw and now everybody's going to do it and yeah. it's just it's it's just it's almost magical how that has expanded from like 300 seat you know bingo halls to monday night raw every week and, and even pay-per-view. like stuff like that i would even consider like at least from what i can tell on wwe tv there's even been like a lessening of the what chance which is i think a wwe thing yes like it was a composed thing you don't see that really ever on the indies um, I've, I've never, I'm not to my knowledge. That I've seen happens. Any. Like we're talking about the what channel in general. Yeah, I've that really definitely seen that happen, happens though. at RWA. Yeah, <laughs> <Does it? laughs> like, like there's like, like, but I think I think we're also talking about. I always say with RWA, RWA is not an indie crowd. Very much, my, uh, RWA is a crowd. I feel that watches Monday Night on Raw. Or doesn't watch and used to watch back in the day when what was a thing and they're watching now because this is in their backyard although I, I understand like a few people do drive in a pretty good distance too yes um but like that feels like that is that crowd that that's maybe you know in in that kind of era of things yeah that is that crowd and the great thing about them though is that having a crowd like that they don't want to see the same thing so i find myself constantly trying to change what i do trying mm-hmm. to add new moves and stuff uh because you know they've already seen it and they know they remember that you know mm-hmm. and you get a lot of the same people you know night after night plus mm-hmm. especially something like rwa you guys are there monthly yes. you know it's it, it's it's rwa night of the month you know yes. uh, so i think <laughs> i think there is like and I think that lends to, especially that organizations, and not everybody, and not everybody can do this. I mean, IWC, IWC was running court time monthly, and and you saw everything wane, and now they kind of you know eased in and started spreading out a little bit, and they needed to for what they were doing, I thought. Um, but RWA, I'm just seeing them get bigger and bigger. There was a standing room only last show. That's, yes. that's crazy. I mean, not that. I mean, that was like I think I don't know what the final number was, but I know on the DVD it said 230 people. But I mean, that's still getting bigger and bigger, and they're going to soon outgrow that gym at that at that rate. Yeah, so. absolutely. And the great thing about RWA is they don't have to bring in, not that this is a bad thing, mm-hmm. but they don't have to bring in legends to get, you know, people to come to their shows because they know mm-hmm. every month, same spot, you know, they're going to mm-hmm. be there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, another thing that is great about RWA is they do have those storylines and they build upon it and they build upon yeah. it and the fans it get is. behind it. It is. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I I don't know if I spoke on this on the show before, just in private. I think that whole like building stories is really big, um, to building your crowd and build and making sure they're you know and and getting even like a hot crowd reaction for one night is mm-hmm. based off of I think of you know building a story and getting people invested. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, yeah, and it's it's been it's been an interesting debate for me, especially since like starting with Inspire for me, like coming from a fan into doing this like i i was very trepidatious of in the beginning like i i i and i still am today like i always have fear about like being in locker rooms and like how people sort of perceive me that people know and luckily i've never had any problems like everyone's super nice and receptive to me um but i always have that fear of like oh they knew me when i was a fan in the crowd like cheering for whoever and now i'm working for them which is you know but i think that happens a lot though like that like especially like, and, and the thing I was told from the beginning is that everyone, and it's a, it's I don't like to use the phrase a lot of the time, but everyone's a mark. Yeah. But, but it's in a sense of everyone is a fan. Everyone, yeah. especially in the indies, got into wrestling for a reason because yeah. they watched it and, and loved it and thought they could do it or, or whatever. So everyone came into the position at some point in time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. And, that, that, that's sort of the advice that and I, I can't giving. remember how I don't know even know how many times how many people we talked about talked to on the mayhem show or, or we talked to Joe Dabrowski at the beginning of this show and about how he was a guy that was sitting there and they said you know I think he helped with one of the shows in his school or something like that yeah and then they said hey kid can you help with the website or something like that um I how when we talked to I think Larry Sweeney 
Like it, like I remember talking to him the night he won the Super Indy uh, belt. Uh, it was in uh, McKeesport, and 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 he was just like, you know, you know, I my I came here years ago and Monroeville, you know, and watched that Super Indy, and now here I am. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's happened for a lot of people. They were fans in the audience. Larry Sweeney was an amazing guy too. Actually, mm -hmm. the first ever indie promotion I went to, it was right before I had tried out. But anyway, he was the first person to approach me and just you know give me advice on on the business and mm -hmm. things to watch out for and you know he didn't know me he, you know mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. why would he come up to me he was a good guy oh yeah oh yeah and he was always really nice to us he had a lot of fun with us on the podcast and stuff and just like you know who are we you know yeah <laughs> you know especially back then oh my god who were we um you can tell he loved the business <laughs> exactly yeah. he did and he always had great discussions with him at the shows you know at, at the booths and everything like he, he was really really good for it um so and, and it's a shame what happened um but you know but it's a great thing when you can uh you know sit there and share your passion with other people and like you said we all are fans you know so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um but i think it, it kind of went into what um aim and i were you know discussing it was like what about that point where you know unfortunately i think fans kind of go too far you know i, I often worry about we, one instant we were talking about before the show uh i think we, we were all you guys were all there for that right uh a yes. clearfield show where there's no guardrails they didn't run them back then with the iwc and i think it was a, a title match with uh joe joe demarco and or, you know, jimmy demarco sorry and uh shane. and jay rock no shane shane was the enforcer okay. on that one okay uh but he didn't help the situation <laughs> <laughs> i remember i thought he was gonna kill an old guy during i was that gonna say match. i i know shane and if, if shane could have handled it then yeah what? exactly shane will <laughs> shane will not back down from anybody um but i remember specifically jay rock you know they were out in the crowd getting pretty crazy and uh jay went jay rock went to grab a chair and the ladies said pulled it back and he turns around, goes back to, you know, being on DeMarco or something like that. And a lady hauls off and strangely, gingerly hits him in the back. <laughs> <laughs> whoops. It whoops. And then yeah. the next, and then unfortunately for the ring crew, the next, the next step, the next show we're up there, there is some guardrails. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Guardrails are a good thing. I don't know. I mean, I, I hear these people talk about these stories, you know, where maybe a fan got involved and then they decided they were going to, you know, show that. You know, that's not a good thing to do. And I think mm -hmm. about like lawsuits and stuff. I mean, I, I, I yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't want to cross that line. And there's a lot of people. I mean, we know we've heard stories from the Gambinos, you know, we've seen, witnessed some stuff uh, with the Gambinos. Um, but, but I think that's part of, I think, you know, that's kind of like an unspoken rule. It's like, you know, people are going to get involved they cross that line you cross it back you know yeah uh, and yeah. but it, i mean the premier has insurance precisely for those kinds of reasons you know it is a very physical at least looking and perceived thing and people can get a little too into it especially when alcohol is involved sometimes oh, when yeah. alcohol is it's, not it's involved. usually no guardrails mixed with alcohol the one <laughs> <laughs> It's not a good idea. I'm really, I'm really. I, I've been to, I've been to indie shows held in a, in a popular music sports bars. They're not sports bars, but like bars. Uh, and yeah, things can get crazy. Uh, <laughs> a lot of times, it's never like being physical with the wrestlers. It's, it's usually people getting too far and too close, like mm -hmm. too close, like in the ring, too close. Um, but yeah, so, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a too close. Uh, there was a base brawl. Where they had the match in the the matches in the middle of a baseball. Oh, I think field. I've heard this story. Yeah, yeah. I told this one on the other show. Where a guy there, but I think there was a bar right next to it over there in Ellsworth, and the guy just like apparently was watching, walked in, and this guy was a big guy, like he was as big as Abyss or something. And it was a tag match, I think, between the Gambinos and sexual harassment. <laughs> And he just walks up and steps up on the apron. <laughs> I think I remember like like Eric X C looking over like, who are you? <laughs> and they eventually yelled at him and he, and he got off, you know. <laughs> there's a there's a show. Um, I it's I, it's somewhere online like a fan cam thing. It's a, it wasn't a show I was at, but uh, there's a big like title match is the main event and. They do a thing where the ref gets knocked out and, you know, he hits the guy with the belt. The heel hits the guy with the belt and basically is supposed to get the win as the ref starts counting. And it's in like uh, Seguin, Texas, I think, which is very much southern Texas, like small town, like that kind of crowd. Um, and there's a dude that just comes up and grabs the referee's hand so he won't make the count. 
Oh my god! And it, yeah, <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, and I've worried about that. Like RWA in particular, I don't know how many times I worried about that. Or when they know? come up to the ring and they're pounding on the ring. Well, that's a pain mm. in the ass for us on production because then Chachi can't go anywhere because they're all standing on his court, you know. And yeah. we're trying to get over to the announcers to do the clothes. Yeah. I mean, it's a really cool effect. We got I got a really cool sound flight of everybody chanting uh, uh, RWA and pounding for like the intro and everything. But it, it's like. Sometimes they do it before they're supposed to, and there's more stuff mm-hmm. that's supposed to happen. Because I, I remember there's some months where they'll come up and, and they'll, they'll surround the ring and just start pounding on the mat. It, mm-hmm. It's a really cool feeling in the building. But sometimes there's a run in that still needs to happen from the back. <laughs> and, and, and there's all these people in their way. Uh, I remember one of my first shows at RWA was. Um, and it wasn't even anything like that. Everybody was mostly in their seats, but it was like, you know, big clusterfuck at the end. You know, uh, this fax was running in. All the good guys are doing this. And and somehow, um, and I can't remember the one one girl that used to be there, uh, redhead, curly. I want to say her name's like Roxy or something, uh, was coming around the corner and apparently got punched in the face by one of the fans. Oh, no. I mean, she was a heel, so, like, I think yeah. that's what, you know, that what led to that. And I remember, like, Gory coming over and looking at the footage, like, you know, what the fuck happened and all this stuff, and, like, and, you know, trying to figure that out. That's scary. You know? I mean, it is. But, you know, you got to think, you're, like, you're, you're not very far from those fans, especially in a small gymnasium like that. And you have, a, you know, a giant thing happen with, like, you know, 10, 12 people, and they're all running around the ring, you know, chasing each other. You know, stuff can happen like that. And, that, and that's, the, that's the stuff I kind of worry about with, uh, with shows like that. But, um, but for the most part, I think I mean, they've handled it pretty well. There. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, there. I feel a lot of the time for me. I mean, even if I'm healed, there's a mutual respect there, you know. Mm-hmm. And I just mm-hmm. want them to know, like, look, you know, okay, this is who I'm. I'm, I'm being tonight, but this is still my job, you know. Yeah, I'm yeah. still a professional, yeah. right. and there is a barrier here. So and they'll get in your face back, and they 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 will. They yeah. will I, I've, definitely with you lately, they, they've been getting a little more in your face. Yes. Maybe not as much as some of the other guys, but uh, sometimes least... that's how they get over his heels. Mm-hmm. Is that you know give it right back to them the, the but bet the best thing is again i mentioned ryan Edmonds, and i remember he would get involved with these people on facebook <laughs> and everything and that just even more built into yes. where they showed up to get in his face yes to the point where they had a segment where they would i think they did a drawing to get fans to come in and they gave them like 30 seconds to tell them a piece of their mind on on the mic <laughs> and it was ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> but it was like the greatest like interaction point I think I've ever seen with them. It was like this this whole like year or two they've been running with him um, until you know finally the retirement match and whatever they're doing with them now. This new thing that came up, um, it was just kind of like a magical point of anger with those guys <laughs> yeah. um but yet so scared something might actually happen um especially the um the one time when he was uh wrestling his girlfriend and and you just felt like somebody is going to run in if there's not a good guy save any second now and i feel like it was so close hmm. <laughs> yes he's given rwa some great memories <laughs> <laughs> so um awesome um so i don't know if amen if you had any more you want to discuss on that point no that was awesome yeah 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 definitely there's a a, it's a conversation i think that's very unique with indie wrestling so uh, yeah yeah i'm glad we could definitely have it um I guess we can talk about some indies that are coming up this weekend. Yes. Uh, can uh, I mention, I, I, this isn't in there, but I saw, I, I didn't realize you were on this card too. We had a mention, oh, I'm sorry, I can't remember who passed along to me. Uh, damn it. Uh, but I did see it on your flyer. Uh, Five Star Wrestling is actually have a benefit. I usually, yes. I try not to promote, because, I mean, you know, we are, you know, the Texas Connection, we're all over the place. Uh, so it's hard to promote people that don't have a, a regular DVDs. Uh, but this is a pretty good cause, so I definitely want to make mention uh, for this show coming up on March 29th. Um, a night for Kaylee, so it looks like it is it is a be- benefit show. It looks like it's going to have, uh, is that, oh, Sunny is going to be actually Sunny. there. So, awesome. Um, 
if you want to check that out, they have a website. Do you know? Um, I think they do. But the good thing about uh, Five Star is even though they don't sell the DVDs, they allow the workers to videotape the matches. Okay. And mine will be on YouTube. Okay. So, so FSWWrestling.com if you want to check out information on that or any other information to help out. And this is uh, you know, a knife for Kaylee, a benefit for uh, 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 Shriners Hospitals for Children. Um, and that's over in uh, Cranberry. Cranberry. Yeah, Cranberry Township. March so if you want to check out. A lot of friends of the show a lot of familiar faces from uh, uh looks like rwa iwc that you know we we talk about on the show and everything do i see big bully Busick on that poster yes that's amazing <laughs> Very nice. he was at the last uh five star show too he's from just a he's from down in weirton isn't he right across the border i don't I know that is he i think so okay i so. think he is actually because that's where the show was mm -hmm. and yeah there that was just so awesome so there's some stuff there uh, north of pittsburgh if you want to check that out uh, or find all the information, or if, even if you want to go, uh, you know, donate or anything like that. It's for a good cause. Uh, yeah, it's a great cause. And I always love seeing, you know, stuff like this. I mean, actually, you're probably going to be in some fashion involved with the Salute to Troops coming yes. up with RWA. Another, yes. uh, you know, really good tribute military thing they're down, doing down at Cal U. And I don't know if you have any more information on that than I do that you can share on that. Yeah, everything you need to know is on Facebook. And I'm pretty excited <laughs> about it, though, I have to say. I mean, my father mm -hmm. gave his life for the military, and so that, it, it touches home for me. So mm -hmm. it's not the right. first military tribute show I've done, but, you know, I'm very excited to be a part of it. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun coming up in April, of course. Uh, Eamon, I'll let you get to your list now. <laughs> yes, <there's, laughs> besides the benefit shows, which are awesome, uh, I, I, if there's ever a benefit show anywhere in your area, go to it because it supports yeah. more people than just you know the independent wrestlers. Um, there are a couple Texas indies I wanted to talk about. Uh, I can't personally go to these shows, but these are shows I'm very excited about, and I think if you're in the area, you should check out. The first is for uh, this weekend. They're both on Saturday, March 8th. For uh, this, The first one's for Reality of Wrestling, which if you don't know is the Federation of uh, Booker T and Booker T wrestling school uh, is sort of based uh, in this federation in houston texas uh they're going to be holding a good event they actually do a lot of uh, all their shows are for uh, they have a uh, television syndication in houston uh which is very cool um and the big name for that event uh awesome kong will be there uh competing uh and and reality of wrestling from what i've seen they have a lot of good production stuff uh uh, not only are they on TV, but they put all their uh, shows on YouTube as well. And it's great production. Um, and all of their guys, uh, their homegrown like uh, talent from Booker T's training school, is actually, are, they're all actually very talented um, and good-looking guys. Like I said, really good production, so it comes off as, as a bigger show. It's a show that can really, like I think, capture you. Uh, and they're doing some really cool stuff. So that's uh, Saturday, March 8th in Houston, Texas. Uh, if you want more information, you can go to realityofwrestling.com uh, and go check them out. So it looks like it should be a very fun show. Uh, but if you're not in Houston and are in the uh, Dallas, Texas area, uh, more specifically Bedford, Texas, uh, go to um, Metroplex Wrestling, uh, which you can go at facebook.com. Uh -oh. slash MPX Wrestling. Uh, a good group of guys over there. A lot of the guys on those shows have actually worked at Inspire Pro. Um, which, uh, those are really good guys. Uh, the main event is going to be really, really awesome. I think, uh, feature, it's a three-way match featuring, uh, Matthew Palmer, uh, Gregory James and Paul London, nice. uh, which all three of those guys are mega talented. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I encourage you to check them out. They've got a lot, they've got a lot of good roster. And like I said, I've, I've actually got the privilege to work with a lot of them in Inspire and they're all really awesome guys. Not just awesome people, but really talented wrestlers. And I gotta say, uh, Paul London, seen him on uh, recent shows here with IWC and Prime Wrestling uh like back in october and uh the guy has not lost a step and really cool guy mm -hmm. um so yeah definitely go check that out uh you definitely won't be disappointed with uh seeing him out there awesome yeah so that's uh facebook.com slash mpx wrestling uh where you can get more information for that and last thing i want to talk about uh is a group not in texas uh, but if you're in the mid-south area uh you can go to uh iwa mid-south is having an event this weekend for sunday bloody sunday uh this sunday march 9th uh it looks like a really good card uh michael elgin's on the card uh, uh main event uh chris hero against reed bentley who's one of the up-and-coming midwest guys uh in a tap out or knockout match which should be really fun uh, Elliot of Ring of Honor fame, uh, Drake Younger, recent signee to WWE, uh, so that will be very cool. Uh, there's even an intergender stretcher match, which I think that could be very interesting. 
uh, even uh, and there's also a six man tag featuring friend of the show Gary J uh, uh, going up against guys like uh, Homicide of TNA fame and the Necro Butcher. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff on that card, and uh, that's in Clarksville, Indiana, uh, this uh, Sunday, uh, March 9th at the Jammers Roller Drome, uh, uh, which is apparently it's a roller derby wreck. So. Um, that's a very interesting venue for an indie wrestling show. So. Which is kind of like pro wrestling on skates. Um, yeah. That's a, if you ever get a chance to get some, check out some roller derby. There's some stuff in, some in Pittsburgh here. I actually want to go back. That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, could you imagine taking all the mayhemers down to roller derby? Oh, boy. I, 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 there's, a I believe, some roller derby group up in Austin that I've heard about. There are I, roller I want... derby groups anywhere you can imagine. Yes. You're surprised where they can pop up. Like there's more ro- roller derby groups probably than indie wrestling feds. Um, yeah. And that's a big thing to say for Pittsburgh because there's too many feds in Pittsburgh. Uh, <laughs> that's a big thing to say for Texas. So like, yeah, <laughs> there's way too many too. feds in Texas. But um, but no, uh, go support them and you can, I believe you can go to facebook.com slash IWA MidSouth to uh, get more information on that. Awesome. Um, those are the big indies that are happening this weekend, but if there's any indie show in your area, we encourage you to go check it out and go support them because they're, uh, you know, that's, you get to support your local talent, get to see some new guys. It's, it's always fun to go to indie wrestling shows. You never know what you're going to come across. Nope. Um, and I guess we can also finish off uh, the show with the challenge that we had last week, our uh, Indie Mayhem Challenge, uh, where basically we pick an indie wrestler. Uh, we compose a playlist you can find on YouTube.com slash slash wrestling mayhem show uh and basically you give us your thoughts uh and sort of expose yourself to more uh, indie wrestlers this week's was one i was very excited about mm-hmm. to get to see a bit more of uh normally it's it's me finding an indie wrestler that sorg doesn't know about uh but luckily <laughs> this is someone from sorg's neck of the woods in this case uh, it's something that i probably filmed most of this playlist um yeah. <laughs> dalton castle the party peacock um yeah i actually just saw him against bobby fish here uh saturday night at combat in clearfield and taking on luke gallows the week before actually actually hey there's me with the camera um (laughs) (laughs) um big fan this was was just a cheap plug to get sorg on the on the on the the, uh the challenge for this week yeah completely no you have some (laughs) other stuff here actually that i don't know um but no dalton we've had him on the mayhem show before and everything Mm -hmm. and and actually is there you you for uh with with dalton around too yes so he is extremely talented and hilarious Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm Yeah, I love Dalton's work from the stuff I've seen online. Uh, he he's very he's because uh, comedy wrestling I think is a big appeal, but also he's just very confident in all of his promos yes. and 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 he has a, a speaking ability that I think is is very unique. Well, he's also a DJ in which which New maybe York. that's where that comes from. <laughs> so I think that helps. So, um, but yeah, no, he's in, uh, because uh, the biggest thing with me that stuck out for him was that he was doing this uh, uh, Sisterhood of the Traveling Tights <laughs> show or he actually, he was doing like kind of the Cole Cabana thing. I don't know if it was before, during or, or whatever, uh, but he was interviewing people, you know, along and he's like, hey, here's me wrestling and they posted on the radio site. So it was like great exposure for like, hey, I, mean, I don't know how he played it up on the air or anything, um, but he was very open. Like I'm a DJ, I'm a wrestler and you know, this is a thing. And I know, oh, I think weird with him. This is, this is my only drawback with him. I saw him on Ring of Honor one time and mm. he almost acted like a caveman and it really <laughs> threw me like like sometimes he gets that you know where he's like kind of like you know got that like you know i can't it's, that, it looks like a caveman. brooding yeah I'm not brooding he's just like looks like he's not going to speak english sometimes um <laughs> and i see him do it in the matches and it just brings me back to that one because i mean it was like a weird squash match so he didn't get to do anything else um but uh but a great match here actually you have posted i don't know what show is this from um with him and sammy callahan we were just talking about before is you now uh, solomon crow on nxt uh that you're probably going to see here very very soon um he's got an uh, i think an amateur wrestling background and you see that he's he's mm-hmm. you know much like we like with i think ray Rowe. It's, it's a very uh, different style than what you expect when you look at him yeah yeah a lot of a lot of suplexes um mm-hmm. a lot of kind of deadlift su- suplexes like like his latest finisher has been like a, a a deadlift into like a fisherman's like pin um mm-hmm. and i love really these impressive. deadlifts if you if you know my wrestling love 
deadlift people that can deadlift people and it's one of them <laughs> that's why he loves uh, his mike elegan i, I, I love my mike elegan i love mike Antonio cesaro I, I i just love it all so sarah you need to add a deadlift uh <laughs> suplex <laughs> Instant I'll, get, fan. I'll start working on it okay <laughs> <laughs> start start deadlift and sassy stuff that's right <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, Dalton's great. I, I encourage anyone that hasn't gotten the, pre- the pleasure of seeing him to go check him out. Um, maybe, as we mentioned before, even order a D- DVD from SorgatronMedia.com. <laughs> or, um, so, yeah, or anywhere else, like uh, wherever this Matt else. Tavern matches that I'm, I'm, I'm eyeing up here now. Um, that looks like it's probably, uh, is that AIW I'm looking at here? Possibly. I, th- I think Dalton has worked AIW before. And I think he's also been um, involved in 2CW. He's been involved in... Um, I, I might have seen him on PWR, Pro Wrestling Rampage out of the Erie, but they don't really do DVDs right now. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, he definitely, he, he came in IWC as, as a heel. And I think people kind of really turn, you know, you know, turn mm-hmm. in his favor. Uh, sort of that NXT bug. Kind, where you, yeah, the NXT bug. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of comedy stuff, a lot of fun stuff. Uh, here he's chasing in, around a ring with uh, Matt Tavern here. Um, so yeah, a lot of fun stuff. Check out Dalton Castle. It's worth it. You guys will have a lot of fun with it and, uh, mm-hmm. check him out on IWC or anywhere else. He might be popping up. He's been getting around a little bit. So yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, what's our, uh, uh, challenge for this next week? I think it's your week to pick this week. Uh, I have a very awesome challenge, uh, for you. Um, a talent I've known from the Texas area who I think, uh, this definitely should be, and I've, more than I'm sure will be the year that he will break out. Um, he's already expanded to companies like Beyond Wrestling, uh, which was a huge jump um, uh, working their tournament for tomorrow's show. But he is probably one of the better wrestlers in the state of Texas. Uh, and that is the centerfold Matthew Palmer. Uh, he And I mentioned uh, the MPX show, that, uh, that three-way match with Paul London. He'll be on that show uh, competing with, in that three-way. Um, Palmer is one of my favorite guys, uh, the combination of just wrestling ability as well as personality. The dude's got so much personality. It's ungodly, I think. Um, and he's got a great look, uh, a great life story too. If you ever look up sort of like his past and, and, and everything he's been through, it's, it's very, very compelling. Um, and he is one of the best. I, I, I don't think I can, I've seen a bad Matthew Palmer match. Um, and he's done some different stuff and he's always, he's always challenging himself. So, I definitely encourage you to check out Matthew Palmer and go support him because he's amazing. Um, but yeah, he is our challenge for this week. You can go to youtube.com slash wrestling mayhem show and view the playlist that I have composed, uh, featuring Matthew Palmer matches. Uh, but you are not uh, limited to the playlist. Uh, you can look up for whatever you want from Matthew Palmer, uh, including, I would say buy that tournament for tomorrow DVD, uh, or I believe, I'm not sure how beyond wrestling selling it, but, uh, go buy it when it comes out because he gets, I believe to the semifinals and gets to compete against a lot of different people. That's in what I'm sure to be awesome showings. Um, uh, but go basically, uh, look up some Matthew Palmer this week. Uh, tell us what you think by either tweeting us at mayhem show or emailing us at good times at wrestling mayhem show.com with the subject line indie, uh, to, uh, go give us your thoughts and we will read those thoughts on the air and let, uh, and, uh, basically spread the word and, and, and expose people to more indie wrestling. Cause that's what, that's uh, why we're all here. So awesome. Awesome. Uh, Sarah Feeney, where can people find you uh, online and, and maybe even the next few weeks if you got any shows you want to mention? Look me up on Twitter, Sarah Feeney. Um, S-E-R-A-F-E-E-N-Y. That's hard for people. That's hard for me. <laughs> it's hard for me. Um, I, I, I will say I double taked for a second when typing it. I was like, is it two E's? I think it's two E's. Yeah. <laughs> it's spelled a lot of different ways for people, but no, that's the right way. And also March 22nd, RWA. I'll be there. Jesse Bell, bikini contest. <laughs> we'll see how that works. Is that the first one of those for you? It is. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, that's a milestone. <laughs> high First point time for everything. Career highlight. I'm Career sorry. I'm, highlight. I'm sorry. I'm going to miss it, but I'll be editing it. Uh, I later. I really don't think she made that stipulation for her because she doesn't wear a lot of clothes to begin with. You know, I was thinking about that because they announced that, and, and <laughs> she's walking away, and I'm like, she's not 
she and she's like all like like making i'm gonna wear skimpy stuff and i'm like yeah what less can you wear? what more can you <laughs> show I think, I think there's a physical threshold with that top yes uh, for one thing um so yeah. so it'll be inventive i'm sure <laughs> now, now all she needs is a pool. No, just kidding. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> wow. Well, so March 22nd, RWA, <laughs> West New PA Bikini Contest. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What, what did we, where did we go? The direction. This is the part where Joe Dabrowski <laughs> says, what happened to my life? Um, <laughs> And, yes. I, and I will mark out if you blurt that at some point in the match. <laughs> so is it a match or just a contest? It's a contest. So so it's not, okay. So it's not like so a I bikini just, match or anything like that. It's not a match. Okay. Yes. Uh, I don't have much else to say. <laughs> <laughs> About the state of women's wrestling. Anyways. Yes. Um, and also you're on Facebook, of course. Yes, Facebook, as well. YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. I'm on it all. There you go. And you can find us over here on WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Like we said, that email, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, uh, at May Mayhem Show on Twitter. Uh, find the Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Google Plus, and the Great Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. Tons of people jumping in there telling us what they think about indie wrestling, major wrestling, uh, minor wrestling, all kinds of flavors of wrestling. <laughs> uh, some things that don't have anything to do with wrestling, but they're just damn funny to wrestling people. Um, you can also uh, find us here if you want to join us live in the chat room. Ask questions at live.sorgatronmedia.com about 11 p.m. Eastern Time. What was that 10 o'clock Central for you over there, Texas? Yes. Something yeah, like give that. Us, give, us, give us Texas boys some love. I got Central Time. I'm, I'm, I'm just involved with the right coast. Um, <laughs> You got thumbs up there from the audience. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's other stuff I'm supposed to mention, too. Uh, no, we don't have a show note person on this one, do we? Um, and, of course, look up the show. We're in audio video forms over on iTunes on Google. Um, no, no, not that. YouTube roku stitcher this is the last show of the day guys it gets a little wonky <laughs> um all that kind of stuff and uh and leave comments please on itunes and, and youtube especially let us know what you think uh, uh about the show about some of the stuff your opinions on things uh, especially with indie wrestling um and tell us how much you love and what you do love about indie wrestling uh and until then go go support indie wrestling guys even with your money with your eyeballs with your comments tell a friend all that kind of stuff. We'll see you next week.